Though it's safe to say that I was right about Tyrese Halliburton being one of the biggest steals in the 2020 NBA Draft. I know we all talk about LaMelo and his all-rounded game, but Halliburton has been one of the most well-rounded rookies that I've seen in a while. He's already put on to display his exceptional playmaking, basketball IQ, and three-point shooting, which some people thought wouldn't be able to translate into the league. He's off to a terrific start for the Kings, and he's not only looking like he could be one of the best players from his draft class, but he's also looking like he could be the best player on the Kings in short time. In this NBA today, in order for you to become an absolute superstar, you need to have a very diverse game. I'm not saying that Halliburton will be a superstar, but it's safe to say he will be a very good player for years to come. Coming out of Iowa State, he was known as a guy that proved he could be a very good playmaker at 6'5". In college, he doubled his assist total from his freshman to sophomore season as he topped out at 7 per game. Watching Halliburton, you could see that he just has a natural feel for the game, not trying to compare him to Luka Doncic, but the way in which his feel for the game looks playmaking wise gives me Luka vibes. His knack finding teammates cutting to the basket now that the 3 point line is just advanced beyond his years already. That's definitely his best attribute as a player at this point, and he's going to get even better once the Kings actually surround him, Fox and Buddy, with better players that fit their system. And firing Luke Walton will help out as well. But for right now, he sits second to LaMelo in assists per game among rookies. He's only a couple decimal points behind LaMelo in assists per game, but he turns the ball over only one time per game, which is better than LaMelo's two turnovers per game. In the half court, his pick and roll game is deadly because he knows exactly when a guy is open or not as he anticipates a lot of his passes. Like I said, his feel for the game is already very good and with that being said, he makes his teammates better. For example, he and Rashawn Holmes already have a nice little two-man game that they can go to in pick and rolls and Halliburton does a great job of making the right pass every single time. Whether that be a pocket pass on a pop out, a bounce pass to the roller, and he can even see guys across the court and make the right pass. His passes are almost never errant, which obviously really helps his turnover rate stay low. His pace and pick and rolls is my favorite thing about him. He seems like he's a veteran with some of the moves that he makes. The little hesitations to face the defense, the stop and goes, and things like that. With him being such a good passer already, he puts so much pressure on the defense, which then allows Halliburton to be a deadly scorer in many ways. We'll get to his 3 point shot in a minute, but as for his driving slash mid-range game, he must be able to take advantage of those areas in the future. He shoots 69% at the basket right now, which is honestly very nice for a rookie as he ranks 4th in rookies for at the basket efficiency with rookies with at least 1.5 attempts per game at the basket. However, he could be even more effective at the basket. There have been a couple times this year where he's been shying away from contact at the rim, which causes him to miss a couple bunnies. He's a pretty skinny dude, he's only listed at 185 right now, and he's not the most athletic. So putting on 5-10 to 10 more pounds of muscle would honestly help him out a lot once he gets more experience. Also, I really hope he doesn't have the tendency to be too pass happy to the point where he hurts the team, similar to what Lonzo Ball has been struggling with throughout the early part of his career. Hopefully he knows when and when not to attack and shoot that jump shot. Speaking of jump shot, we all know about his weird looking release and for the most part it has been going in. Right now he shoots pretty much 50% from 3 on 5 attempts per game. Will that hold up? Hell no, but he's shown very good signs. He can hit standstill threes, he can hit somewhat off the dribble threes, we haven't really seen him take pull up threes yet or mid ranges for that matter just yet, but I believe that will come over time. He has shown the ability to get a shot off against tight defenses so far and that's a great sign. He's also showcased the ability to hit a sidestep, step back type of 3 pointer with a defender in his face. And that lets you know that his jump shot works in the NBA. The real question is will it work in pull up and more off the dribble situations. That's where I have some concern about Halliburton being a very effective scorer. I don't think he'll end up being a really really good ISO scorer, but in the pick and rolls I think he could be very deadly. Like I said earlier, defenses will play pass first a lot of the time when he's in a pick and roll as the ball handler, so that mid range pull up will be open for him. If he gets that shot down, he'll be unstoppable in my eyes. Like literally, how would you guard that? I will give him credit by mentioning his floater game has been above average already. That's another shot that will be very good to his game once he gets it down pat. Now defensively, Halliburton is definitely not slacking. I'll say this right now, his defensive IQ and awareness is already off the charts when you just look at the games. He knows exactly where he needs to be on rotations, he isn't the fastest, but he works very damn hard on that side of the ball and that could make him a defensive demon. 
Him having a 6'8 wingspan as a guard obviously gives him a big advantage guarding smaller guards. He plays very well defensively within the team, he rotates to the right guy in almost every time, and his best attribute on the defensive side besides effort is his knack for getting into the passing lanes which is unlike any other rookie I've seen before. Most of his steals come off of passing lanes as he uses his long arms and anticipation to reach in and steal the ball from opposing offenses. And he's not only good at passing lanes, but he's also damn great at closing out on shooters. Whether that be the man he's guarding or the man he has to rotate out to from the other side of the court, he's a very good closeout defender as well. Even in pick and rolls, he still finds a way to affect the shot of his opponent as he gets back and recovers nicely. Yes, he's not the most perfect defender and sometimes he picks up cheap and dumb fouls due to reaching in, but you can expect that from rookies early on and it's not a big deal. I would also like to see him gain at least 5 or 10 more pounds for him to be better on the defensive side so he can switch on to bigger offensive players. Don't get me wrong, he holds his own a lot of the time guarding bigger players in post so far, but he has to work extremely hard just to front the guy and stay in front of him to prevent the pass. It will be a lot easier in some instances if he was stronger. He's already making his team better defensively. Through the first 8 games of the season, the Kings held a 108.1 defensive rating whenever Halliburton is in the game, which is good for 11th best in the league. When he's out of the game, that rating plummets to 114.9, which doesn't seem like a huge drop off, but it is. That 114.9 would be good for the third worst defense in the entire NBA. Huge drop off. As for other areas of his game I would like to touch on, he's already a very clutch player. It seems like he has the it factor that not everyone has. During the first 8 games of the regular season in the clutch, which is a game that is within 5 minutes, within 5 points, Halliburton has played in 19 of those 25 possible minutes and has scored 11 points on 4-6 shooting from the field and 3-4 shooting from 3 and has not turned the ball over in those situations. Clutch. Just the fact that he plays so hard on the defensive side of the court lets me know that he's a great competitor and he'll only get better with more experience. Also, him being a 6'5 guard, his rebounding is already exceptional. He looks to get the ball and immediately push it down the court in transition. He's already made some very nice plays in transition. He finds the right guy damn near every time and honestly, it's fun to watch. Now it's time for my overall thoughts and projections of Tyrese Halliburton. I believe he will indeed be one of the best passers in the league in no time. He's already the best or second best passer in his draft class. I can see him averaging somewhere around 8 to 10 assists in his prime and possibly lead the league in assists one day. Of course that all depends on the situation. We will have to see how his career pans out on the Kings with him and De'Aaron Fox. Yes Halliburton can play off the ball, but he's at his best when the ball's in his hands and the Kings will definitely have to come down to a decision of who they want to keep later down the road. How will he fare scoring the ball? Well it gets a little bit dicey. It depends. If he picks his spots correctly and balances his scoring and passing ability at the same time, he can average somewhere around 22 points per game tops in my eyes. If he has Lonzo Ball syndrome and is too passive to score the ball, then I can see him at most averaging 18 points per game on very good efficiency. I don't think he'll be too great of an ISO scorer, I know he'll get better, but I don't think ISO scoring would be his cup of tea. Honestly, I think this guy could be an all NBA level defender. He's just that good. Not only is his technique and IQ great, but also his effort. He gets into the passing lanes like no other, and I expect him to be among the top of the league in steals per game average later down the line as well. Can he be the best player on a championship caliber team? No, but maybe a number two guy really depends on if he really develops as a scorer in his career. The Kings really got a steal at number 12. Let's see how they handle the Buddy Heal situation, and let's see how much Tyrese develops over the next two seasons or so. If he doesn't develop, I guess we can just all blame Luke Walton. I would fire Luke Walton right now because we already know if he stays there any longer, he's going to mess up Tyrese Halliburton's career. With that being said, let me know how y'all feel about Tyrese Halliburton. Is this guy a future all-star? Is he the biggest deal of the draft? Is he the rookie of the year right now? Is he the best passer in this draft class? Let me know all those down below. Have a nice discussion. But anyways, if y'all like this play breakdown, tell me who you want me to do one on next. With that being said, this is Jimmy from Just The Facts, and I'm signing out. Peace.